All right, we got a sniper two, EF5. Nice. Big Earn here. We got a Sniper 2 EFI on our Dauntless V6 here. Before I had a carburetor on there, the Rochester two barrel. Uh, this is rated at what 160 horse, uh, horsepower. So probably the Rochester was giving me a hundred of it. So I was getting like 60% maybe. And then I went to a, a F2100 and that gave me a little more. And then now I got uh, everything that this motor can give, it's getting it from that EFI. I absolutely love it so far. A um, little tricky putting it on, and I'll cut right to the chase. Uh, it was that Hall uh, effect sensor that's on, on the, uh, you see it down there, on our harmonic balancer. Um, I'll show it to you right now. Yeah, so that was the, the that was the, uh, that was the thing that made everything run right because we got a, a odd fire engine and the odd fire engine did not does not like the uh, computerized sniper 2 until we put on the crank sensor which is the hall effect so i'll get into that right now all right cool got my little mat out here gonna go under the vehicle all right so you can see the hall effect sensor right there um, it's that thing it's on three bolts one two and then three it's on every fourth hole on this harmonic balancer so one two three four and these are just bolts i put three eighths by one inch and they're just bolts there's no magnet uh this is the part number on holly it's uh what is it five five four one two four <laughs> And uh, what it does is it, as this rotates around like that, it picks up these bolts and it gives the computer something to go by. So that's, uh, this is your timing here. So um, you have to put on one of these. You get rid of your, you can see how I put my on right there. It's a, I took out the uh, fuel pump, the mechanical fuel pump, and then I bought one of those O'Reilly's covers right there. And then I just welded a, uh, a, a little fancy doohickey right there <laughs> in one of my uh, one of my ranches. Uh, put it right on to where it needs to go. So the directions say it's supposed to be 0 .040 to 0 .080, but uh, for us in the Dauntless crowd, uh, this is a lot uh, bigger. Uh, I measured right here because I was at that with the feeler gauge trying to get up in there and uh and we backed it out some and we're up probably at but 0.15 uh we <laughs> we used a, a a ruler to measure it believe it or not uh, uh my kid's ruler Anyhow, so it needs to come back out, not as uh, close as they say you should. I don't know why. I'm guessing because it's this funky engine, this crazy looking engine. But uh, it hooks up. Um, there's a black wire, a red wire, and I think it's a, a white wire. The white wire goes to your purple wire, to, the, to the, your sniper. Um, the black is ground and the red is for and the red is for uh, key powered. So this is how it wired my stuff. Um, I put the red to key power, the white goes to the purple wire, and the black is your ground. So in, in the kit, it'll come with the, there's only like five wires that are loose right there. I, I think a pink, a blue, and then a couple other ones. One of them is purple wrapped in a green. There's also another connector that goes to it that you can click into that and, and it will eliminate the uh, green wire. 
So you don't want to wire in that green wire. Um, once you clip that in, it'll just be purple. Now that purple wire goes down to your hall sensor and right to the white wire. So white goes to the purple. And a little note there that I made, uh, you have to go into your handheld on the tablet to go into your startup wizard and click on the um, feature down there that says MSD box. Um, in my case, when I did mine, it said CID box and that's the one you gotta click on for your uh, crank sensor hall effect to work. And also there's a yellow wire that goes to your tack. You're not gonna use that. Just go ahead and tuck that away and uh, Put it away from there so you're not using that. All right, so I did not figure that out, by the way. I had a couple years of reading the internet, and even then I was still like, I don't know. But uh, on Haggerty, Craig, Craig Fitzgerald wrote an article on it, and then that kind of put the light bulb on. But yeah, even after the light bulb went on, I still was uh, really reluctant to, to put one of these on here. Um, I was talking to it with a neighbor, Rob, and he ended up buying one, and he took it into Advanced Engine Dynamics. Uh, in Corona, uh, over here in Southern California. Uh, we're out here in Riverside. It's like halfway between LA and uh, Palm Springs. And uh, um, they went ahead and did it up. They put it all on and hooked it up. And when I finally got to see it, how they did it, then I ordered mine. <laughs> so um, yeah, we put bolts on it and it's at 120 degrees to part. Uh, Haggerty put a pretty good uh, example or uh, write-up on it. Yeah, I'll put a link down in that for down in the in the description, uh, so you guys take a look at that. But uh, but yeah, I just bought the whole kit. Uh, I used their lines. Um, I ran it uh, all the way to the back. Used the stock fuel tank. Um, so yeah, um, if you want to put one of these on here. Uh, um, Couple issues you gotta know is like right there on top of the thermostat housing, it will hit. So you need a riser, a quarter inch riser right here. I ordered a phenolic riser. Off of eBay, uh, it's supposed to um, stop from uh, the heat so it doesn't because I guess this generates a lot of heat the, the, the EFI so that kind of like dissipates the heat the only problem with that uh, the smallest one I could find was a quarter inch and that lifts up quarter inch which you know uh, I was worried about the hood clearance but I was able to get good here hood clearance here um, I had to modify this uh, if you could see you see with the hammer, I knocked this down a little bit. I probably didn't need to, but the next one I won't do that to. So this has a, a, a big, a bigger hole here that'll fit on your, uh, your Ford 2100 carb uh, that I had this on originally. And what I did is I cut a two and five eighths hole with a hole saw that fit right up on top of here. And then I cut around the sheet metal and then I welded it in there. So that made it down lower. Uh, you can see how I welded it completely on the bottom and then on the top I spot welded it. And it made for good air clean, um, clearance. see what else so yeah um, this comes with directions it shows you uh, vaguely how to do it but everything kind of lines up pretty good you got to get your power here straight to the battery and um, there's a lot of traffic here on this little dirt road 
Just out here messing around, testing it out. Uh, it's on this dirt road. And people are going by. Yeah, so first you got to start out with a good running engine and uh, HEI distributor would probably be the best thing for you. Um, these are kind of hard to put in because you got to grind down in, into the into the manifold right there. So if I were you, I'd probably just take it into a shop and um, they'll do it, get it all timed and running right. Once you got one of these from points, you'll never go back. You'll always want one of these. These things are the best for our little engines. Yeah, the wiring is, um, you know, it's in the, in the directions. Um, I just put my stuff up here. Pink goes to key powered. Uh, the blue is your fuel pump. Now the other issue that I was afraid of that uh, that I've seen on a couple other YouTube channels is the fuel pump is really loud and that kind of like it was a deterrent. But if you can hear it, hopefully no cars come by. The one that comes with it is not that loud. So as far as the wiring goes, uh, you can, uh, there's other YouTube from, directly from Holly, and they have those out there on how to do it all. Uh, same thing, I use the stock um, gas tank. Uh, Turn and Burn showed us uh, how to do the uh, with the inline and the return line. Uh, there's two hookups down there at the bottom, and uh, that's how I did it. I just ran, I just ran the fuel. You can see it down here. Ran it up like with a stock right underneath here in the middle and came back up like this and this one that way. Um, you know, not too sure I'm going to leave it there though. I might bring it back around this way. Just uh, it's a tight fit in there, but it is working pretty good. Um, See what else? So I took it to Advanced Engine Dynamics because I was having trouble. It was flooding out of me right when you turned, right when I first turned it on. Uh, I don't know, it wasn't tuned correctly or whatever. I bet you had to do with these little engines that we have that are odd fires. So I took it to him. You guys should give him a call if you're in the area. Uh, he knows he's pretty good. He had this thing dialed in in like less than two hours. Um, put it on the computer. Our little screen. It hooks up down there with the OB2 cable, and he put it right into the computer. And he dialed it right in. But yeah, it runs nice and cool, and really enjoying this thing. So, Sniper EFI. I'm a big fan of it. I like it. Yep. So if you don't know, this is Bob Away. I've been working on this guy off and on for the last, I don't know, a year or two years already. Uh, I got this guy dialed in, put the Sniper EFI on there, and I'm very, very happy with it. Um, yep. It's got a two inch lift. It's got uh, 35s on it. Uh, oh, 33s by 12 and a half by 15s. Uh, Mickey Thompson's on there. Uh, runs pretty smooth on there. Uh, I cut off the bumper. Uh, I lopped it off right on the inside here. And then uh, I made a cut and hit it with my hammer. So I got this little little bend here. Same thing on the other side, welded it in. Um, Put the winch on here. It's just a little small winch that'll fit inside here. It's kind of a stealth winch. You can see where I put the front of it at right here, the bottom. Uh, I did a video on that. You can go search uh, my thing, check it out. Um, see, I got a MB uh, repop on there. When I bought this Jeep, it didn't have a, a, um, a front grill, so I had to buy that. Um, I didn't want to buy all the hookups for it, so uh, I just made me some. I have some motorcycle headlights. I've had good luck with that, so uh, they still work. It's been over like 12 years I've had this Jeep. Got them on both sides. It's motorcycle headlights. They wire in the same way. Um, what else did I do to this thing here? Let's see, I put the Sniper EFI, just let you guys know. 
We got power steering. Uh, with the Sniper EFI, I'm still running the same alternator. Uh, charge is fine. Everything seems to be okay with there. I deleted my um, heater core, tapped it off right here. I think it was a quarter inch MPT. I'm not quite sure, but I tapped it off, threaded it, tapped it off. Uh, put an ATI on here. Uh, I didn't do it. I took it into the shop and they did it because I spent a long time trying to figure that one out and just couldn't get it to fire. I just, you know, had to just take it in. <laughs> uh, put some headers on there. Uh, just a little while ago, I, it originally had a, a automatic transmission in it and um, the transmission went out, so I just converted it to four speed. I had this whole engine out, did a bunch of videos on there, how to, um, how I did my clutch setup. I'm using a Novak clutch. Um, was going to try to figure out how to do a hydraulic clutch on the floor, but I was just wasting way too much time with this. And then uh, I just slapped it back together and installed it. Um, you can see uh, I using the I made this cover right here. Uh, you can see how um, um, you see I cut it in four pieces, the original one, and then I. In the middle, I filled it in with sheet metal, bent it nicely. And then grinded out all the welds. And then did a decent paint job on there with the rattle can. Um, let's see, I got my salary pedal. I welded a, um, a wrench on there. I shortened these pedals because I don't like that full swing on there. So I just got a small swing, uh, small throw on that pedals. And let's see, I just put those on, put new seats on here. These are, these are the seats from on the internet, eBay. Um, I tore them down. I made a video on how I did my other ones. I did these pretty much the same way. Um, tore them down. I sewed it up, OD green. I dropped it and put it all the way back. That's why I fit in here a little bit better. I'm a pretty big guy. Uh, let's see, I did these. Uh, I did a video on that. Check that out. Um, sewed up, let's put this down. Sewed up the top. I think I did a video on that one. Check that out. I need to probably, if I'm going to continue running these tires, I probably need to make a cut here and probably another cut over here, but I'm going to wait on that. I just did some right now, did some little rock crawling right here right now, and uh, I didn't really have an issue with it. Um, run these, these Chinese deals right here because um, they're hard to find the real ones, and if these ones get messed up, then it's not a big deal. But I like to put my straps back here, that way this thing is very secure. Um, uh, got a, a stock um, spare tire right here, and that's just for, for looks. I uh, put these lights in. I think I made a video on that. It's the LED lights. Uh, I got a real full size spare back here. It takes up a lot of room. Um, let's see here. Uh, I got the Big Willie's Jeep sliders on here. Love those things. They work really, really well. Uh, Warren hub, selectable fronts. I got running 427 gears in the front. That's a Dana 27 and a Dana 44 in the rear. Uh, 427 gears. I got a, a V6. I got a four speed here. Uh, SM420. Uh, let me show you the, pull this thing back out. Let's go under there. Um, 
yeah, so you can see here, this is our, um, this is a transfer case, and then this is the adapter from Novak. And you can see how I put the clutch cable and I made like a bracket that bolts onto here. Uh, I made my own cross member, um, put new, new um, exhaust. Uh, I got new drive shafts. Let's see here. New drive shaft up front. Um, I still got to put a shield here with my ramp like I did before. I made a video on that. Uh, you can see how I put some Under Armour on that differential. I got to put one on the back too. Um, let's see here. I cut down and made some, uh, some skid plates on my shackles there all the way around. I put uh, rock lights all the way around. Um, but yeah, this thing's this thing's coming around. It's coming down, dialing it in all the way to where I want it at. <laughs> but yeah, I got this uh, mounted up here. It's just on a phone mount. I'm probably gonna put another one. I use this phone mount for my other phone. It has the Onyx Maps when I'm on a trail. So I'm probably gonna put another one. Probably gonna put another one right beside it for this thing. I, I really don't think I need this, but other than when you install this sniper unit, you lose your temp gauge. So the mechanical temp gauge, it doesn't work no more. So you rely on this for your temp gauge now. Um, and I wish this had like a feature on here, it just showed your temp gauge or showed your RPM temp, but it has all that other stuff on there too that uh, doesn't make any sense to me, but... Um, we need it, I guess. So, but uh, you're gonna need to know the temperature, so I need to put this thing out here. It's not weatherproof either, so I'm gonna probably put a bag over it when we go wheeling if it's uh, weather's gonna be bad. Um, what else? See, I sewed up those seats. Decent tires on them. These tires, I, I'm kind of, I'll drive them till they don't drive anymore, and then I'm probably gonna put some. Uh, Something a little bit, uh, I don't know, something like uh, what Rick's has in his blue Jeep. Or those mutters that uh, Zupan has. I think something along that style, I think is gonna do pretty good for this for this Jeep. Uh, I got Slum Dog and he's running OG uh, military NDTs on there. That's also an option here as well. They sell the bigger tire now, the 7.5s, that, uh, that I'm interested in. I'm just not interested in all the prices, though. Uh, they pretty much tripled in price, and that's a deterrent, which makes me want to just run these till they die. <laughs> See how this thing handles the rocks. Pretty nice. Probably should have took some more air out of my tires. Like nothing. Like butter.
the thing up here. It's not cutting out. I was letting it idle. I like it. It's pretty dang good. Let's try to go a little higher. Let's see if it'll climb those other rocks. Granny low. playing fancy feet here and trying to get my right foot on the brake and the accelerator pedal it's just doing nicely just sitting there at idle beautiful all right put this in granny low we're gonna go up these rocks right here see how we got going on oops a little touchy on that clutch <laughs> It just walked right up there. I barely had to give it any pedal. I'm in neutral right now. Got the brake on. And it's just comfortably purring away. It's at 900 RPMs, 950 right now. Um, absolutely happy with this thing. Outstanding. Well, yeah, that's old Bob Boy right here. Got old sniper EFI on that thing. Um, yeah, the directions show how to line it up. Uh, make sure when you put that Hall Effect sensor on it, it's at 120 degrees uh, with those bolts. I used uh, 3 8 by 16 one inch bolts, and I put there's three of them on there. Every fourth hole goes one on, so that there's three of them that go like that. You do not need the magnet. But yeah, remember. Uh, there's a purple and green wire that come off. You tuck away that green wire. All you need is that purple wire. You come down and attach to the white wire on that Hall effect sensor. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Big earn out.